Dragon Age Inquisition is almost here and contains Dragon Age's most elaborate character creator to date, packing more beards, wrinkles, jowls, double chins, haircuts and funny noses than a game of Guess Who. That's not to mention the face tattoos, eyelash settings, facial feature sliders and enough makeup to stock a drag queen's dressing room. There's a lot to look forward to in Dragon Age Inquisition's character creation, so here are six details we love, but also one that we definitely don't. You should never have existed. Dragon Age Inquisition lets you create the kind of grizzled, battle-scarred and frankly hideous hero who looks like they can get the job done. After all, this is Dragon Age, not Day Spa Age. So if you're fed up of playing as RPG heroes who'd look more at home working a Hollister than they would on the battlefield, not naming any names, oh <laughs> then Inquisition has just the character creation options for you. There's an option to have a broken nose, which is something you get quite a lot when you put your face near monsters, I expect. Even the angle of the broken nose can be adjusted so you can decide if your hero got their nose smashed to the left by a stray tankard in a bar fight, or to the right by a close call with a bandit. There's also custom scarring in which you choose the shape of your horrible face holes and their location to create the kind of face only a mother could love. If you're going to be playing as a Kunari, meanwhile, you can also choose to have asymmetric or even broken horns for that battle-worn look that says, don't mess with me. Even more so than usual for these giganto war-painted people, I mean. If we are to withstand this monster, we must control the battle. Dragon Age Inquisition promises to let you live your exact fantasy as leader of Thedas Last Hope against the Sky Hole and the demonic horde that's sifting through like flour through an evil sieve. Me personally, I can't get my fantasy on unless the centres of my eyes are the exact icy blue of a raspberry slushy and the outer bits are green like Kermit the Frog. So what have you got for me, Dragon Age? Anticipating my very specific demands for eyeball customization, Dragon Age Inquisition's character creation lets you pick the colour of your inner iris and outer iris separately. Then it blends them beautifully and without judging you, unlike the staff at the milkshake bar. Dude, peanut butter and mint is delicious. At any rate, no crazy party contact lens colour combo is off limits for your Inquisitor, such as the fetching violet and red on this Lady Kunari. And if you want two complementary shades of piercing green, you can do that, sure, if you can bear the missed opportunity to rep for your sports team with blue and orange. Go Nyx! You are a mistake. I didn't spend dozens of hours installing Alastair as bloody King of Ferelden in Dragon Age 1 just so Dragon Age Inquisition could come along and trample all over my personal Dragon Age canon. I'm Alistair, the new Grey Warden. Not now, Alistair. Thankfully, Dragon Age Inquisition's character creation lets you import your world state. This means embedding the many, many decisions you made in previous Dragon Age games into your save file for Dragon Age Inquisition, so that the world you enter as Inquisitor in this new game is the one you remember from the earlier games. Which is just as well, because I'll be damned if I'm letting anyone else on that throne. I'm not exactly the Chantry type. Shush, Alistair. It's not a fully automatic system that lets you just, for instance, point your Xbox One at your Xbox 360 save files. Instead, you actually need to define your choices at Dragon Age Keep, the free service that will go live about a month before Inquisition comes out. Then Inquisition will import your choices from the Dragon Age Keep website. That means a bit more work on the one hand, but on the other, if you're feeling like a cheater, you can go back and change a decision you've always regretted. Inquisition with the Herald! For your lives! For all of us! In defiance of the fantasy trope where all dwarves have Scottish accents, in Dragon Age all dwarves have American accents. Hi, I'm Brian Bloom and I play Varric in Dragon Age Inquisition. Until now, that is. For the first time, Dragon Age Inquisition has a fully voiced protagonist character. Well, that was impressive. Thanks, Samantha Trainer of Mass Effect fame. So yes, there are four voice options for the Inquisitor, two for each gender across the four playable races and you'll choose your voice in the character creation stage. By default, dwarves and kunari have American accents while humans and elves have British accents, but why not go crazy and give your dwarf inquisitor a British accent if you like? There are no further voice options at launch, sadly, so there'll be no Orlais-style French accents or Antivan-style Spanish accents, but with 11 billion lines of dialogue to record and fit in the game, you can't have everything, hey? If you've ever built the perfect looking character in a character creator then launched into the game to discover that they have a giant weird misshapen head that you now have to spend the rest of the game looking at, then good news! Bioware is well aware that this is a thing and has worked with their lighting engineers to make sure that the character creator has as close as possible to a neutral lighting state for the game, so you get a decent idea of what your Inquisitor will actually look like when you get out into the real world of Fadus. 
The opening of the game also contains a variety of lighting conditions and angles on your Inquisitor, so you can easily go back and switch things up if you realise you look totally bizarre, which is better than finding out a few hours into the game that bright light makes your Lady Elf look like Brian Blessed. So chances are you won't look like a horrifying monster throughout the game, unless that's what you're going for. This advance comes too late for my Commander Shepard, sadly. Ugh. More pain this time. The Elder One still comes. Upon choosing a gender and a race in Dragon Age Inquisition, you then choose your class from a choice of warrior, rogue, or mage. Within those classes, however, you can also choose specializations which determine your starting setup, such as a dual wield specialization for the rogue or a weapon and shield specialization for the warrior. But these specialisations aren't set in stone. If you get a ways into the game and decide that having a shield is for losers and you'd rather be using your second hand to wield giant greatswords, you can do just that and respec whenever you fancy. Maybe I'll get myself a great maul. I always wonder what that is. Ooh, or a bastard sword. Alexius, it's time to answer for your crimes. That's plenty on what we dig about Dragon Age Inquisition's character creation. We're less jazzed, meanwhile, about the lack of body variation within a race. Although we now have a character creator so deep we have literally nine different sliders for customising noses, we don't have any options for altering your character's height and build. Height and body type in Inquisition vary with race and gender, but within a race and gender choice, every character you make will have the same body. The developers say devising the body types for different races was the priority rather than having sliders that worked across all races, and that's fair enough, but anyone hoping to create a towering Brienne of Tarth style female human or a skinny but deadly Canary are out of luck. Barring that, however, those were the details we love in Dragon Age Inquisition's character creation. What kind of Inquisitor will you create? Let us know in the comments and like and subscribe for more Dragon Age Inquisition from outside Xbox. Bye!